All right, thank you for staying with us. After about three years of unveiling the national carrier Nigeria Air, the federal government is hoping to begin operations before the year runs out. But the domestic airlines are fighting tooth and nail to ensure this does not work out. According to them, they are not averse to having a national carrier, but the structure and design is not well befitting for Nigeria in the long term. They also complain about the national carrier being given undue privileges, which they would not enjoy. After putting together a 10-man legal team, they are expected to meet in court with the federal government on Thursday to decide whether this project would go on as proposed. Well, joining us via Zoom to discuss this matter is a policy analyst, Group CEO of Global Investment and Trade Company, Baba Yusuf. Thank you for staying with us. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Veronica and Mike. Thank All you, right. Veronica and Mike. Thank you. Welcome. Right. Now, there are those who have said that um, this uh, move by the government is a camouflage of interest. But talk to us what you see, uh, what you sense going on with uh, what uh, the federal government and uh, those who are taking the government to the courts are looking at fighting for. Well, first of all, uh, we need to set up some caveats. Uh, as you mentioned in the opening remarks, this matter is already in court. And to that extent, slated, I think, for hearing or to, to begin the process of hearing tomorrow. Uh, and to that, in that case, we need to be cautious. Uh, the line of conversations we told so that we don't run foul of the law. Uh, so I will be able to skirt around the issues so that we don't go into the meat of the issue, if you like. Uh, to my mind and to the mind of all stakeholders, the objective of government, you know, slowly removing its hands from the business of doing business and focusing on the business of governance is okay and it's important and it's way to go. Uh, the issue, I think, now, this particular matter with regards to the uh, flag carrier uh, is to tell us that um, we need to do things maybe a little bit differently so that the objectives will be achieved. Like you also rightly mentioned in the opening remarks, people do not have quarrel with the objective in this particular instance, what may be the process. And uh, maybe my line of conversation will be about how we got here and possibly the learning points moving forward with regards to this kind of situation. Maybe discussing the critical success factors of such kind of projects like the PPPs, the public private partner, pu uh, public private sector partnerships, uh, concessions and their likes uh, moving forward, how they should proceed. It's a very important time in the history of this country, uh, particularly the evolution of aviation. The aviation sectorial reform agenda by this administration, particularly the Minister of Aviation, Senator Hadi Sirika, is laudable. And uh, where we are today is also interesting. I think it's going to be a huge value add to the development of aviation. But suffice it to say, that since it has gone to court, and indeed, if the process is, uh, of litigation is exhausted and the court takes a position, this sets a precedent, not for, just for future uh, aviation projects uh, in terms of concessions and PPPs, but it sets a precedent for the entire PPP value chain in the country across sectors, uh, which, to my mind, <clears throat> is a welcome development uh, and will guide all stakeholders moving forward. All right, uh, Baba, let me, let me come in this way. We, we have had a, a very successful run of uh, Nigeria Airways in the, early, in, the early, in the 80s and parts of 90s. And when it comes to the experience yep. of running an airline, of course, Nigeria have had that experience before. Although, when it comes to service and... Uh, uh, and some other management-related issues, there, there were challenges and then there were issues, alleged corruption within the system and so on. But talk to us, basically, uh, Nigeria talking about a, a, a carrier at this time, 
where Nigeria Air will be, will be floated. Fr from your perspective, what lessons have we learned uh, the, from a, the defunct Nigeria Airways ensuring that it would not repeat itself in the Nigeria Air that, uh, that the government is looking at? Thank you very much. Fundamentally, the objective of setting up the flag carrier, I think, is part of this is addressing, should address the issues that led to the downfall of Nigerian Airways, number one. And the reason why presently the concern of stakeholders is this particular process of having a flag, flag carrier should be gotten right to ensure that history does not repeat itself again, albeit in a different color or format. Bottom line, the flag carrier is a welcome development. The achievement is laudable and it is way to go. However, records have shown that the modeling of national carriers or in this case, the flag carriers fail if not properly set up from the beginning. And that is where I will, you know, talk to us about the critical success factors, which I, to my mind, I believe one should be the integrity and transparency of the process and transactions uh, to the legal framework. You know, what I consider the win-win should, you know, consider the win-win for the stakeholders, you know, uh, short to long term. The model also that will be adopted, even in this case with regards to the lead car flag carrier, should be such that it will impact positively on the socio-economic, you know, uh, situation or development of Nigeria and Nigerians. The fourth one uh, should be the, pro from the project management perspective, what I call the project execution quotient to deliver the project in a way and manner that it fits into the overarching strategy and also the focal point objective set, you know, from the beginning uh, to ensure, first of all, proper setup, management operation and sustainability short to long term of that project. And of course, uh, the last but not the least, critical stakeholders engagement from beginning to the end, you know, across the value chain to ensure there is 100% buy-in, which may be part of the fallout of what we are seeing today with regards to this issue. Right. Now, with the myriad of challenges that we have seen bedeviling in our aviation sector, is a national carrier the solution? Uh, I think that, to correct again, I think we are not doing national carrier, we are doing a flag carrier. However you want to look at it, uh, I wouldn't want to, you know, frontally answer that question because part of the answer may delve into the crux of the matter before his lordship, you know, Justice Ambrose Alagoa of the Federal High Court. However, having a flag carrier or the national carrier, as the case may be, will be is a function of the overall national aviation, you know, growth strategy to key into an overall national development plan or strategy. We agree in the industry. Everybody agrees that it is time to have a flag carrier. However, maybe the house and the when are the issue. And I think as a stakeholder, I believe we should be sure-footed and moving in the right direction and ensuring that at the end of the day, if and when we have a flag carrier or national carrier, as the case may be, we have that which will work for Nigeria and be sustainable within the ambit of the overall set out social economic objectives. When you say work for Nigeria, uh, a flag carrier that would work for Nigeria, I want you to give us uh, more insight into um, what you are talking about. What works for Nigeria is fundamentally to go back to the objective of setting up a flag carrier, for example. 
in this particular context. Mm. What are the reasons why we need to have a flag carrier, for example, to, you know, uh, boost the aviation sector, to also encourage stakeholders within the aviation sector and um, enable and empower those in the aviation sector, to also support local content in terms of business, in terms of technical know-how and whatnot. I think those are the critical objectives of setting up a, a, a flag carrier, apart from the international, you know, value added, you know, uh, image setting and other critical objectives or strategic objectives. So that being said, the house and the well, like I said, should be what should be focused on to ensure that the project is a success. And uh, uh, the timing of the flag carrier, let me talk about that. The, national, the Nigerian Aviation, I mean, sorry, the Nigerian Airways, you know, has uh, gone under many years ago. The world didn't come to an end. Uh, the rush to have a flag carrier now, to my mind, may, at the end of the day, negate the laudable objective of intending to set him up the flag carrier, as the case may be. All right. Now, talk to us about the, the point is the aviation business is usually a global business where uh, you may have your domestic uh, peculiarities, but it's, it's a global industry. Uh, talk to us from the mm. perspective of how local airlines, domestic airlines can make the best of the aviation uh, business from the Nigerian perspective, because we often hear them uh, the uh, local op or domestic operators talk about undue advantage to international uh, airlines and, and players and all of that. But talk to us, how do we make the best of the aviation so Nigeria can fly its flag and, and fly its people with all the pride that goes along it? It's to continue to support our domestic uh, operators, the airlines and the support group, be they ground handlers and other the catering services, the entire aviation value chain to support, you know, the domestic, you know, or the local operators and to ensure that they have what it, what the enabling environment and all the critical support to grow. First off, like you mentioned, aviation is international. So what we are saying is, or what should be considered is not just to throw what should be international standard or lower the bar, as the case may be, but indeed to make the level, the, the playing field level and flat enough and give opportunity for those that have built capacity over time, built integrity, and have the wherewithal and have built strategic partnership, you know, globally. And I, indeed, operating even in the international space. We have airlines, domestic airlines in this context that are doing international and regional routes. We have those that also have potential to grow. So one of the key I think things for government to do is to support those, you know, airlines and those business, businessmen and women that intend to invest their time, their money, their integrity and partnership to grow the industry. I think that should be the focus and whatever should be done as it is done in other countries that have grown their aviation successfully and in a sustainable manner is for our government to do the same and where opportunities come to make the level, playing field as level as possible in line with best practices and give people opportunity to participate and to excel and to grow. Now, still on this matter that you're speaking on, there are those who think that uh, perhaps uh, the aspect of policy, somersault, economic crunch, and... Uh, all of it has also been one of the issues or some of the issues that have, you know, bedeviled our aviation sector and had made it struggle for, for so long in its 60 years, over 60 years of its existence. And, and Nigeria is not the only country that have had these issues. We've seen other countries. The COVID yeah. affected every, every yeah. country. We've seen the matter of the yeah. economy affecting every country. W what is that missing link that we are not getting right with uh, our aviation sector? Well, uh, you, you mentioned one of the key issues, policy somersaults, in, inconsistency in policies. But importantly, uh, the overall 
you know, aviation strategy, aviation development and growth strategy. What is it? And how all encompassing is it? And how short to long term uh, has it been set up? Uh, the inconsistencies with that, regards to policies vis-a-vis -vis maybe administration. When this administration leaves and the other one comes, possibly they may decide to reject that policy, which is also one of the reasons why investors are a bit wary to rush into investments of this nature. So the policy somewhat salt is a critical issue. You have mentioned the economic considerations, but I think in formulating policies or in setting up projects, you know, uh, looking at the historical and doing proper projections in line with benchmarking and considering what is going on in the, in the world and facing those what I call reality factors will help in when we are sincerely and honestly and in a patriotic manner, you know, setting up those policies. So long as the objective is noble, is sincere, and with a patriotic mindset, I think the policies may not necessarily be changed from time to time due to some key issues, because they would have factored in some critical projections, economic, social, political, strategic, to ensure that even if there are uh, uh, shakeups or bumps along the road of success, they are catered for within the strategic consideration of setting up those policies. So it is important for our policymakers, it is also important for our business men and women to consider the key issues sincerely and honestly when building these models and when setting up these policies. Right. We need to quickly go on a commercial break. When we return, we'll continue this conversation with you. Please stay with us. All right. Thank you for staying with us. Before we went on the break, we were speaking with uh, a policy analyst and group CEO of global investment and trade company, Baba Yusuf, on the issues of bothering around uh, the aviation sector in Nigeria. And uh, there is this uh, issue that uh, have also come up with regards to our aviation sector, where a lot of persons uh, think that um, Nigeria has missed the opportunity of being the West African hub because of the advantage it has, talking about population, its location, and all of that. And because there's also the issues of infrastructural deficit, Nigeria is not positioning itself to be that West African hub. And so it has missed the opportunity. What say you to that? Well, that's true. And um, I think that is why it's very unfortunate. We just hope that we'll be able to make up for lost time. You know, Ghana is taking the lead on that. They are taking all the necessary steps to anchor that, and we can see it impacting on the sector, particularly aviation and the overall economy. Interestingly, while we are talking about it, the Africa Free Continental, uh, African Free, uh, Continental Free Zone Agreement uh, trade zone, trade zone uh, area after has come into play, and uh, Nigeria should be in the forefront to leverage all the advantages that it brings. The, la the infrastructural deficit, especially when it comes to an economic gateway like an airport, in this case, particularly the Lagos, uh, Kano, uh, Kano, Port Harcourt, and uh, Abuja International Airports, are supposed to be primed and properly positioned to rein in all the benefits of all these economic, socio-economic opportunities. That being said, where, have, where, are we, where, where we are where we are today is a function of not lack of strategy, but lack of being proactive or rather reactive uh, most of the time. The question I keep on asking is, do we really have an uh, overarching, you know, properly thought out, you know, aviation strategy that keys into a national development plan? Uh, now, in the last six to seven, seven to eight years, I may say, since the you know, advent of uh, President Mohamed Buhari's administration, Senator Hadi Sirka, the Honorable Minister of uh, Aviation, rolled out what is called the Aviation Sectorial you know, Reform Roadmap, which is laudable uh, way to go in trying to ensure that we become competitive you know, in the space. Uh, one of them is the uh, concession of the airports, which has also you know, sadly ran into some legal tussle with regards to the process. 
And now we have the flag carrier issues. These are the issues that part of the issues that are bedeviling the positioning of Nigeria, you know, in the Committee of Nations, especially with regards to where we should be taking more of the profits and more of the benefits. Rather, we are sitting back and other nations are taking the lead. Uh, we should be more strategic, more proactive, and actually more practical and pragmatic. We should be more sincere in the way and manner we go about this. Nigeria is never lacking in concepts, in ideas, and even in strategy. But the execution, manner, quotient, intent, are the critical failure factors, if you like, and the bane of our growth as a nation, and particularly in the sector. All right. Uh, I need you to give us some little enlightenment or education here. What, what, when it comes to floating a new airline or a new flag carrier and all of that, what are some of the major factors that, is, or that should be considered uh, so that he has a smooth sail or a smooth run? Well, also, yet again, to remind us, the matter is in court. I would have loved to really delve into these issues and yeah, of precipitate course. The, the, issues. And this, is, to, this is not to, you know, this is not I will, to push it. I will skirt around it. Yeah, but this is not even yes, to talk about what, what the case is in court right now. It's just to talk in ideal terms, generally. Yeah, ideally, of course, the standards are a function of what should be uh, in terms of the, the, the requirements of having a flag carrier or national carrier. But indeed, for every other country, the objective behind setting up a national carrier or flag carrier presupposes, and indeed it is so, to build, first of all, the domestic market and position the domestic sector to be competitive, you know, international. And suffice it to say to that extent is to, first of all, see how you can enable and build your domestic market or your domestic uh, operators or players. Uh, in within the framework of setting up what is required to set up. And in most cases, you know, still going back to the partnerships, you know, uh, to see how maybe a local operator or a domestic operator will partner with an international, or in this case, the country in question, Nigeria, will support a carrier that will carry its national flag. Uh, in most cases, what a better way than to give your own, if you have that capacity, within the country, one of the domestic, or consolidate them and, uh, you know, to have what could have happened in the, in the banking sector, for example, my school of thought, uh, to say, consolidate the market and then have a strong and robust airline that will carry the flag. But the question is, don't we have that, for example, in the case where you have, you can start with that. And the fundamental actually is setting up that standard you know, to say these are the requirements. And for those that don't have the requirements locally, they can partner. Where the partnership will not come back and haunt the country or impact ne negatively on the country. But importantly, I think the first critical objective is to grow the domestic sector, to empower the domestic sector, to be competitive internationally, not the other way around. So whatever framework that are to be set for in this context, the flag carrier should be set in, the, in that way and manner. And when that is done with all the safeguards and all the strategic requirements considered, I think that is when you will have a successful project. Right. Now, there's this uh, other aspect uh, that um, uh, in recent times we've seen foreign airlines talking about not coming to Nigeria uh, because they are not able to, you know, take back the, the monies they have made and all of that. How is that, you know, also affecting the aviation industry? How is that affecting us, especially globally? Well, we can see some airlines already deciding to stop operations in Nigeria. And they gave their, one of the reasons they gave is the issue of their trapped forex in Nigeria. One of them is the Emirates Airlines. Uh, some airlines are still threatening, even though they have not uh, stopped operations. But indeed, they are shouting out loud that it is impacting on their own operations, on their strategic objectives. And to that extent, it is going to be, it is already impacting on us. You know, the, the inability of those carriers 
to you know repatriate quote unquote their you know forex is an issue uh for in terms of operations of course uh interestingly if you do the economics also if this does not stop at the end of the day the consumers in this case especially the nigerians and other travelers out of nigeria or to nigeria will have to be at the brunt of the escalating cost of tickets or travel because the carriers that are ready to continue traveling or to continue operating, sorry, despite this situation, will have to find workarounds, you know, to be able to provide cushion or shock absorbers for this very critical uh, shock in their operations and in their bottom line. So it is a big issue. We have seen uh, and heard uh, the federal government and CBN trying to see how they can reduce this exposure. Uh, well, that still remains to be seen how it would be as impactful as possible to reduce it to minimal. We also know that it is so because of the multiplier effect of the global and global issues that are impacting on, on already existing national you know, economic woes of the country. Hmm. We'll have to leave the conversation here now. Policy Analyst Group, CEO of Global Investment and Trade Company, Baba Yusuf, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Right.